When you were a little kid, did you ever think that you would uh, have milk cartons full of 20, 22 ammunition? Isn't that the coolest thing? All right, we're gonna be talking about the Taurus TX-22. Really cool little setup here. Let's have some fun, talk a little bit as we go. All right, running a suppressor on this little pistol. 16 rounds of 22 in our hand, let's have some fun. <laughs> Ridiculously cool. Guys, welcome back. Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, um, you know we, we love our suppressor hosts here on the channel. 22 pistols are so much fun to play with. And there's so many options out there, right? Uh, so we're gonna be checking out this little Taurus TX-22. Uh, Tim from Military Arms Channel turned me on to this particular gun. Um, seemed to speak some relatively high praise of it. Uh, so we're gonna put it through its paces today, have a little fun. This particular unit uh, I procured from our uh, good friends at Gun Zone Deals. Uh, sent this one out for us to check out and uh, do a little bit of uh, shooting here, evaluation with. It is a relatively large pistol uh, compared to something like a Smith & Wesson M&P Compact. These things come in at a relatively good price point. Uh, I think they're around like 240, 230 bucks. So definitely a lot cheaper than something like the M&P Compact. Uh, but a little bit more expensive than the kel P17. Uh, now we've done a video on that particular pistol and uh, I think it's got a lot going for it. I love that design. Um, it's very accurate. It suppresses well. Uh, this particular pistol, we fired a few mags just to kind of break it in, check it out. Um, running quite well. Uh, we're running a AAC Element 2 suppressor. Uh, this one's well used and well worn. Um, you know, a really nice setup. It, it has a nice feel to it in the hand. It is a rather large pistol compared to the other options when we compare it to the P17 and to the uh, M&P Compact uh, 22. It is a rather large gun. Um, relatively tiny ejection port, doesn't seem to really matter or you know make a big difference there. Ambidextrous safety. Uh, relatively chunky grip there on the back. Almost reminds me of the uh, Walther PPX. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that pistol. Maybe not the PPQ so much, but it's got that kind of hump on the back like the PPX, um, which is not a big deal, but it, it is a, a rather beefy gun in terms of the size. You do have a rail system up front here, which is nice. It uses a thread adapter very similar to the Walther P22. Uh, so it comes with like a, a little thread protector. You remove it and it comes with the uh, thread adapter and you can get this uh, you know, guy with a half by 28 adapter and put your suppressor on there. Okay, 16 round magazine. So with one in the chamber, you do get 17 shots. So it is a full capacity gun. Um, size wise, I mean, it is comparable to the Glock 44. You know, the, I've had mixed opinions about that particular gun. I have shot a few of them and I'm not a big fan of the, the really low magazine capacity. You know, 10 shot mag is kind of a bummer, right? I mean, I think in this modern age that we're in with 22 handguns, there's no reason to not have at least a 15-shot mag. Uh, now, with that being said, the M&P Compact only holds 10 rounds. Um, but those guns have become, you know, quite a staple just because there are so many of them out there and they're so reliable and they're really accurate for what they are and they're just a, a nice, um, lightweight, small option for a rimfire uh, suppressor host, okay? And one of the reasons I like the M&P Compact over something like the Glock 44 is because um, the Glock 44 threaded barrel is an extra accessory you have to buy. And sometimes that can cost upwards of like 170 bucks just to get the barrel that you want. So you gotta pay more for the gun and then buy the threaded barrel if you wanna use the Glock 44 as a suppressor host. Um, you guys know that over the, the course of our channel, we've had kind of mixed opinions about Taurus uh, pistols in general, okay? I've never had a ton of luck with their handguns. Some of the revolvers are really fun to play with, and uh, a lot of their little rifles and uh, combo guns are really fun to mess around with. Um, so they, they do have some interesting things that they're doing, but Taurus as a brand, it's like kind of hit or miss, right? And I know there for a while, they went through like a really big issue with quality control and everything like that and having, you know, basically just issues putting out consistent good guns, right? From what I understand though, uh, they're under new management and their plants are under new management and apparently they're, you know, putting out some really cool stuff. So when I saw this particular gun, I'm like, man, I really want to check this out. Um, let's shoot it a little bit. 
earlier, um, Chad and I were grouping this thing just, um, you know, kind of informally here. And we were exhibiting some really strange flyers. So we'll see if we can get that to uh, resurface here. Three dot sights, real simple arrangement. Man, what a great trigger. Um, that was one of my initial observations on this gun was that the trigger is just really fantastic. The bow has kind of got a really weird shape to it and a strange angle and you would think it really wouldn't be that comfortable, but the way that it stages up, it's very comfortable to shoot, you know, especially for a gun in this price range. Uh, not bad. Your front sight appears to be fixed here. You do have adjustable uh, windage and elevation on the rear sight, which is cool. All right, the magazines, they load real easy. So basically they give you a magazine loader uh, with the pistol, but I noticed too that if you just basically just place the mag on the table like this, you can pull the little tabs down. It, it's really easy to load. And uh, we'll just go ahead and load one of the mags here just to kind of give you an idea of, um, of how easy they are to load. And guys, rimfire, you know, has still been relatively available just because there's so much rimfire ammo out there in terms of the stuff that they're actually producing. Um, you know, rimfires have just become, well, they've always been a very desirable thing for people for training and just to keep the costs for shooting down and everything. But with all of this crazy stuff going on with ammo availability, um, 22 is relatively available. Um, it's out there. Okay. All right, so there's 16 shots in the magazine. Yeah, I think I got one more in there. And we are gonna try some different ammunition. Um, this was the CCI Clean 22 suppressor ammo. It's 45 grain ammo moving at around 1,000 feet per second. And it comes in that little, little milk carton. How cool is that? All right, so we're getting low on that. We're gonna test out a couple of different loads. We've got some different uh, manufacturers brands here. And uh, I'll shut up and we'll just kind of go through here. All right, here's more of the CCI suppressor ammo. Okay, um, we'll see if we can exhibit those uh, string, stringing that we were getting here a little bit. And I think I've, I've got a bit of an idea of what could be causing it. All right, let's have some fun. <laughs> well, color me uh, <laughs> impressed, okay. That's uh, some very nice accuracy there. I've got a couple of rounds left here. I'll just stuff these in the mag here and shoot a few more. Uh, I noticed with the suppressor attached and, and well with the can off of it too, but especially with the can on it, when the slide is closed, I can move the barrel around a little bit. And I don't know if that barrel's flexing under recoil forces or, or maybe um, it's a harmonic difference from the suppressor being attached to the end of the uh, barrel but we were getting some odd flyers and we'll see if that uh rears its head or not but i love the trigger on this gun and this is a great full-size gun uh, for people that maybe you don't want a really tiny 22 rimfire host you want something a little bit fuller size this could definitely scratch that itch Talk about accuracy. All right. This ammo here is our 38 grain 22 long rifle federal uh, bolt pack. Okay. This is going to be a little louder, I think. Uh, these are definitely not subsonic. All right. So this is, uh, is going to have a little, little bit of noise here. We'll see how it shoots. A little bit hotter ammo. Yeah, strange. Look at those flyers. Going way down low there uh, towards the bottom of the target. I know that's not me. It's a very, very strange thing. And I'll, I'll just mention here, like when the slide on this gun is closed, if we uh, take the, the, well, that can backed off a little bit. That could be part of it. But we can take that barrel and just push it around. Look, Listen. 
I don't know if you can hear that, but I don't know. Let's shoot it a little bit more, but definitely reliable. We haven't had a malfunction so far. All right, this is a Federal Auto Match. This is one of our go-to loads. Uh, we love this ammo quite a bit. Auto Match is running at fast as that stuff. So this is about 1,200 feet per second at the muzzle, and that is a 40 grain projectile on the auto match i believe all right let's give this a try this stuff generally sounds okay out of a can it's not super quiet like the other ammo was but we're gonna try out some suppressor specific ammo here in a moment all right let's see if we get flyers out of this stuff Yeah, see, for a plinker, that's what I would expect in terms of accuracy. You know what I mean? That's not too terrible, but man, that 38 grain stuff, maybe it was just a little hotter. It just was not liking that particular ammo. And maybe this uh, gun just likes heavier projectiles. All right, CCI mini mags, 40 grains moving at 1235. All right, so this is a, a great go-to round from CCI. Uh, one of my favorite plinking loads. This is kind of my 1022 load. That's what I keep a lot of this stuff laying around for. Works really well in a uh, variety of different 1022 uh, rifles. Okay. All righty. All right, I got another target over here. Let's have a look. Well, I don't know. These are a little hotter. Let's uh, let's shoot some mini mags at our sodas here in a minute, and uh, let's play with Mister Gopher here a little bit. Oh, yeah. What in the world? Oh, it's hitting really low. That's strange. can is trying to back off a little bit on me there each time. Whew, a little hot. Okay. Sniper Subsonics. Uh, so this is a 60 grain Aguila uh, round. Now these have been known to be a little spotty in certain guns so it's always cool to test these. Now they're generally very quiet. Uh, the cartridge that ejects when or the case that ejects is like a little 22 short case. Let's see how it likes the uh, Sniper Subsonics. This will be interesting to see if these actually uh, shoot okay in this gun. All right, Sniper Subsonics. Yes, sir. Those are accurate. Right on. Okay, that's a win for the Sniper Subsonics. Um, I'm going to shoot one more mag. Uh, we got some American Eagle suppressor ammo. This is 45 grain subs moving at 970. Uh, so definitely these should sound really nice. I use this particular low because it's a plated round uh, that's really good for suppressors. You don't have to worry quite so much about leading and everything like that. I'm going to shoot this mag and then we're going to grab a uh, strap wrench and we're going to torque this can down and make sure this can's not walking off because that will definitely cause flyers too. Uh, we want to make sure this can isn't trying to walk off on us. All right, one more mag here. Good stuff. Yeah, that can's trying to walk off a little bit. All right, let's give it a try. Wow, really likes those subs. Good heavy bullet, moving slow. 
I think that's the ticket. And really, that's the ticket on a lot of rimfire pistols and rifles anyway. They seem to like the heavier projectiles. Uh, I am going to check this can, make sure that we're good and tight here, and we'll repaint the steel, shoot a little bit more. Uh, let's do that real quick. All right, guys, we grabbed a uh, strap wrench and we double checked our can. It was trying to walk off a little bit, so maybe that was why we were getting a few of those anomalies. Um, look, guys, thing is, when you're messing around with this kind of stuff, you have to remember, anytime you add an, an additional variable, you've always got to keep that variable in mind, right? So if you're going to run a can, you know, check it, make sure it's tight. If the gun starts acting weird or malfunctioning or throwing some weird flyers, chances are the variable that you added is probably what it was. I'm going to say that that can um, walking off a little bit was probably why we're getting a few of those weird anomalies in terms of the flyers. But also, um, you know, that barrel, now that this cooled down a bit, I can touch it. That barrel does move around a little bit. That's just something to consider. But for a gun in this price range, though, I am very impressed with it. The build quality seems to be pretty, pretty respectable. And uh, the trigger's excellent. The sights are great. They pick up just fine. Um, I dig this gun. I, I think Taurus did a great job with this pistol. Really cool stuff. Okay, more of the American Eagle 45 grain subs. And we're going to shoot more of those Sniper Subsonics because, I mean, those things just ran so great. Okie dokie. Try a few more here. Oh yeah. All right, well we got, got our suppressor nice and tight. Maybe that's all it was, guys. But that's why we check, right? We don't ever assume, never assume. 60 grain sniper subsonics. This is the round that impresses me the most because generally these things don't really work that great. And they, honestly, I've never known them to stabilize that great out of a handgun either. So really cool. All right, we'll try some long range shots with the sniper subsonics just for fun. I spoke too soon. <laughs> okay, double feed. That's okay. These rounds are an outlier because this is something that's sort of special and different. Give those a try. Man. Accurate. Wow. Man, that little round is pretty nice. Like that a lot. It's a shame that the uh, sniper subsonics are kind of hard to get, especially right now and all of this uh, that's going on. All right, I'm gonna shoot this one, uh, maybe this mag and one more and let you guys get back to your day. Uh, I dig this little pistol. I think that 22 suppressor hosts are really important, especially in a handgun because you can get a lot of great training time. Uh, with a gun like this without having to you know spend a lot of money on ammunition you know nine millimeter 45 380 you know other center fire um, pistol cartridges are really hard to get right now so having a 22 is a great way to get some good training in and not have to break, break the bank okay sniper subsonics all right <laughs> triple tap there a triple threat <laughs> oh yeah one little one little stove pipe there that's okay this uh this ammo is kind of an outlier but man so much fun to shoot yeah not quite 100 percent reliable with the subs subsonic all right, good old mag auto match to finish us out here. Nice discernible slide stop. Okay. Uh-oh. Help to have that mag out of there. All right, one more mag. Good stuff, guys. All right, make a little noise here. Have some fun.
<laughs> all right guys have a great day thanks for watching uh, definitely want to take a moment to thank all of our patreon supporters you guys are awesome thank you for supporting us those of you who purchase man cans um, we've got a great knife pre-sale going on right now well maybe at the time this video is dropping probably not uh, but we've got our microtech knives that we're doing pre-sales on all the time so thank you guys who purchased knives from us uh, that's so awesome of y'all thank you for supporting us have a great day many more videos on the way we'll see you next time